Okay, Giant Team members, so in, in previous video lectures in this module, this statistic module, we've learned about some very important concepts, right? We looked at um, a population versus a sample, some sampling methods and techniques, uh, sample size that's required. Um, we looked at the, the measures of central tendency, mean, median, and mode. And then we looked at variance and standard deviation and said standard deviation is really the measure that's used by everybody because it can be interpreted. It means something. And when you have a, a normal distribution, there's a lot you could interpret from the mean and the standard deviation. So with this video lecture, we're going to look at those interpretations. We're going to we're going to understand why those two measures are very important and how we could start making inferences based on, on that information. And what we're going to talk about today is the, I hope this is, the empirical rule. We are going to discuss the empirical rule. Um, there's, a, there's a formula that goes along with this. Um, but we're not going to look at that. We're going to really just look at a, a normal distribution and how the mean and the standard deviation provide us with, with a lot of information. So let's, let's take our, let's take our, our, normal, our normal distribution curve. Right? Okay, so that's our normal distribution curve. And as a measure of central tendency, let's go with the mean or the average, right? And, and the mean or the average is going to be right there in the middle, uh, that's not quite in the middle, but in the middle of our, of our distribution. So that 50% of the curve is on this side of the mean, the average, and 50% is on that side of the mean or average, right? So from here over, we have 50% of the curve. From here over, we have 50% of the curve. If our, if our average, which is designated by a mu, and I'll write it up here so you can definitely see it, that's a mu, that equals our mean, okay? So if, if this were a test score and you scored up here somewhere, you would say, well, I scored better than 50% of the class. If you scored down here, you would say I scored less than. I was somewhere in the lower 50% of the class versus the upper 50% of the class. Doesn't tell us a lot, doesn't tell us a great deal, but we're starting to get some information, right? We're starting to get some idea of what we could use this, this data for. So in one of the last videos, we figured out how to calculate a standard deviation. We're going to talk about a standard deviation of a population. Okay, a standard deviation. We're going to be looking at a population here. And, and then we can look at a sample. But again, there's really no difference in, in what the empirical rule is, is telling us. Just maybe a little different shape of the curve versus a population versus a sample. So. Once we figure out what our standard deviation is, we could take that standard deviation and move one standard deviation below the mean and one standard deviation above the mean. Okay, so if we go down one standard deviation below the mean, meaning this way, and one standard deviation above the mean, I wish those lines were straight, we have an area under the curve, right? There's an area that's designated by this dotted line, the top of the curve, and this dotted line coming down, right? So this is an area under the curve. So based on our observations and the means and the standard deviation, we can predict with certainty that 68% of our observations, of the observations that we've taken, will fall within one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below the mean. 
Okay, so if we're talking about test scores and you score um, somewhere in this area here, you would say, okay, about 68% of the observations fall between those two scores. So, and I'll provide you with an example um, when we get done this that might help um, clear this up a little bit. Let's, let's focus right now still on the, on, the, on the empirical rule. So that was one standard deviation. So minus one standard deviation and plus one standard deviation. One above the mean, one below the mean. Let's go two standard deviations out. Maybe I should have did these in different colors. So now this is two standard deviations this way and two standard deviations to the positive or this way. So if we take all of those observations that fall within one, two standard deviations below and two standard deviations above, which is now all of this area under the curve, 95% of all observations will fall in that area under the curve between two standard deviations below and two standard deviations above. If we go out one more standard deviation, so minus three standard deviations here, plus three standard deviations here. So one, two, three standard deviations in this direction, one, two, three standard deviations in this direction, that covers this entire area under the curve, which accounts for 99.7% of all observations. Okay, 99.7% of all observations are located within three standard deviations below and three standard deviations above the mean. So think about that. Think about that. If we have an observation that we're taking, that ends up somewhere here outside that realm of three standard deviations, right? Three standard deviations. Well, this is a very rare occurrence. We're talking about less than one half of 1% of the time you would see an observation out here or maybe even out here in the tail of the, of the curve. So if we see something like that, we know there's something going on. There's something that's out of the ordinary because you typically would not see that. Almost 100% of the time, an observation will fall within that three and three standard deviation range. By the way, when we're talking about six sigma, two, three, four, five, six, this is what we're talking about. So a standard deviation is sigma, three sigma this way, three sigma this way equals six sigma. So we're talking about reducing defects and reducing uncertainty by a large degree, almost 100% by, by having things fall within this, within this certain range. So that's the empirical rule. What I'll show you next, next is an example of um, how we could start to really predict and understand this area under the curve and, and how to interpret that standard deviation based on a specific example.